Welcome back fam, it's your girl Angela Denise and I am here with you today with my 2019 Best in Beauty. These are my makeup faves that I kept reaching for during the year of 2019. I've got everything here from uh, foundation, blush, bronzers, and eyeshadow palettes. These are the products that I discovered for the very first time. They may not have been released in 2019, but I personally discovered them in 2019. Um, while looking at them here, most of these products were new releases in 2019. I would say I've got about five here that were released in prior years. So what I think I'm going to do is start with um miscellaneous products first like brow products and mascaras and primers so let's go ahead and dive right into it before we get started with the video you guys i want to say that i miss you guys so much i have not been here on youtube very much over the last couple of weeks but that is because i have been busy with life things all good things trust me um i also want to say rest in peace to kobe bryant there was a tragic accident this morning and i want to send my condolences out to the family of all of those involved so Without further ado, let's go ahead and dive into the makeup. First up, let's go ahead and start out with a brow product. Um, brows are something that I do on most days of the week, even if I don't do makeup. So one brow product that I discovered early on in 2019 was a brow gel. This is a uh, this is the Benefit 24 Hour Brow Setter. I do have it in my brows right now, honey. This is basically bulletproof brows. If you brush this through your brows, you will have them basically brushed up all day. They will not budge. They will not move. Now, I have not tested the 24 hour claim. However, I have worn this brow gel for, I know, upwards of 15 to 16 hours and my brows always stay in place. My brows do not move when I'm wearing this and I just wish I tried this one sooner. I have used the Anastasia one. It's good. Um, and I also used to use the e.l.f. Clear Brow Gel. This is the one that I like the absolute most um i would say i've gotten about a, a year worth of use out of this one tube and i absolutely love it and i do intend on purchasing another one very soon so the next product is a drugstore product so in 2019 i dabbled in more drugstore makeup number one to talk to you guys some uh different options on my channel and price ranges and to just um, explore different things myself. Everything does not have to come from Sephora or Macy's. Um, there are some really great finds at the drugstore. So, uh, mascara. You guys know that the Hourglass Caution Mascara is my go-to mascara, but let's be real. That is a $30 mascara, and I need to replace my mascara tube at least every four months. So, um, I'm looking for a better option. I have gone through two tubes of this mascara that is none other than the essence lash princess this one here in front of you is the waterproof formula um i also have used the entire tube of the regular formula i love them both um if i had to choose i would have both of them at once because they're only $4.99 at, at ulta um, I love the waterproof uh, formula on my bottom brows and the regular formula at the top. I absolutely love this because the consistency of the formula is just right, not too runny, uh, not too thick. And I really feel like the one reminds me of the hourglass one. It does a great job at separating my eyelashes, adding uh, volume and lengthening. I just love it. I mean, to me, it just doesn't get any better at this price point. I will continue to use this mascara. Um, I will continue also to use my hourglass mascara, but of course I'm going to purchase it a little bit less frequently because I have a really good dupe in that mascara for, I would say, a fraction of the cost, like an eighth of the cost. So why not? So if you guys are looking for a great mascara, but you're not trying to break the bank, or if you have teenage uh, daughters, cousins, nieces that are into makeup and you want to give them um, some a mascara to try out, or if you're just looking for a better option for yourself, I totally recommend this Essence Lash Princess. I love it. It's just really good. 
what do we want to talk about next? I want to go ahead and talk about primers. I have two primers that I discovered in 2019 that I keep on reaching for. And one of them I literally use every single time I do my makeup. Every single time. Ever since I discovered it back in March in 2019. So that one is... This is the MAC Prep and Prime Skin Refined Zone. You're getting a half an ounce of the product. Um, I want to say it's probably $23, but how I use it is I put it um, in my oily zones, like pretty much on my cheek and in between my brows. I let it dry down. A little bit of this goes a long way. Um, I believe that this half ounce tube will last me a full calendar year. I really wish that I discovered this a long time ago. This is a MAC product. It's been out for years. You don't really hear anybody talking about it. Um, I discovered it because Mel Thompson talks about it. So I decided to go ahead and give it a try because the other primers that she's recommended really did work out for me. So I'm like, okay, let me see what this is about. It does a great job at oil control. It does a great job at blurring the pores. And at $23, it is literally almost half the cost of more uh, other high-end primers on the market right now. So this is definitely something I highly recommend that you test out. I use it every time, literally every time I do my makeup and I literally cannot rave enough. I have mentioned it to you guys before, um, MAC Prep and Prime Skin Refine Zone. This isn't something that you put all over the face. This is something that you put in certain areas. So keep that in mind. The next one is right here in my hand, and that is the CoverGirl True Blend Base Business Skin Primer. This one came out in 2019, around the time that uh, CoverGirl released some of the other products that they came out with. But anyhow, I discovered this one. This one is the Pore Minimizer, and it doesn't claim to be oil controlling but I really do feel like this one does a good job at oil control and blurring the look of texture on the skin. I don't use this one all over my face. I will also use it in certain spots with spots which is usually on my cheek area and my forehead area. This is a really great drugstore option. Of course, it's available at Ulta and Walmart. I know for sure that's where I purchased it. But again, this is the CoverGirl True Blend base business pore minimizing primer you're getting a full ounce of product and i know for certain that this is less than ten dollars so okay so let's go ahead and talk about some other complexion products and we are far 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 away from the drugstore on these because these come from charlotte tilbury if you guys watch my channel i'm sure you already know what i'm about to talk about because i've been raving about these pretty much all year, at least this one here in particular. I have been raving about the Hollywood Contour One all year long. This is a dark, a medium dark. I purchased this back in April and I have been head over heels ever since. This is a absolutely beautiful product. I mean, it is so pretty. It dries down to a natural satin finish. Um, after you blend it out, I just think that it's so pretty. It blends so effortlessly, but again, dries down satin. It blends like a dream. When I run out of this, I, everything that I'm mentioning today, I will go and repurchase. Just understand that. That is one of the reasons why they are in this video. They are really good. I highly recommend them. The only drawback to this contour one is the shade range. Unfortunately, if you are darker than a MAC NC50, this is not going to work for you. But other than that, if you can wear this, I recommend it over the Tantor. So yeah, this is definitely holy grail status for me. I love it. It blends beautifully and it is an amazing product. Okay. Next is a multi-use product. And again, it's Charlotte Tilbury. I will honestly say that Charlotte Tilbury did it for me in 2019. This is a flawless filter. This is a Hollywood flawless filter. I am in the shade number six, dark tan. You are getting one fluid ounce of product. I know people that wear this on their skin with, with or without foundation before foundation or after foundation. Um, it's basically a illuminating priming product. 
And honestly, what what was I doing without it? I don't know. It's so good. So this one I'd say I've been using since June. And that's what she looks like. It just brings healthiness to the skin. It brings radiance to the skin. Now, both of these products are a little bit on the pricey side, but a little bit goes a long way. They last for a long time. The products are very, very, very high end. The packaging is very high end with the exception of this sponge. I wish that you can kind of like detach or replace this sponge that's on the end of this uh, contour one. But look at that. I mean, look at that radiance. It really does add a natural highlight to the skin that I feel is very flattering and you can also wear in an office, office setting. So I just can't rave enough. Okay, what do we want to talk about next? I guess we can go ahead and talk about bronzers and blush. And first, let's talk about a blush. I do have it on right now. And this is none other than the Cover FX Monochromatic Duo. Now, you guys already know I mentioned that I don't really like the packaging. The packaging is kind of, I don't know, kind of cheap looking, although it does feel nice in the hand of the color. It gets stained. It gets real dirty. Um, and I don't like the off-white color, but the product inside the package is the bomb. This is the Monochromatic Duo Blush in Spiced Cinnamon, and she is gorgeous. I have her on right now, as I mentioned, and I don't know why I didn't swatch it with my other hand, but it's just so pretty. I love it on the skin. I love both sides. I typically wear it... Um, mixed together but look at that it just adds the most natural looking flush of color to my cheeks for my skin tone and i absolutely love it i've been using this on a daily basis with my everyday makeup routine you guys comment down below if you would like to see my everyday makeup routine like something that i would wear to work in a corporate environment but yeah that is a blush that I've been using literally every single day. It's just perfect. Not too shimmery, not too matte, because of course you can build it up to your liking because you have it separated in the pan. But yeah, this is my award-winning blush for 2019. You guys comment down below and let me know if you've had a chance to try these out. Um, but in the color Spice Cinnamon, I feel are great if you're around my skin tone. I absolutely love it. Okay, so bronzers. You guys already know I did a bronzer ranking. No, was it a ranking? I did a bronzer ranking video a few months back, and both of these bronzers were in that video. But first up is going to be the Fenty Beauty Sunstalker Bronzer. First of all, the packaging is to die for. It is absolutely beautiful, this rose gold. Um, it's reflective enough to use it as a mirror. This the packaging is beautiful. You guys know I love some good packaging. Um, this is the color Coco Naughty. I decided to go with this one more so over Caramel Cutie simply because it was deeper and it, it worked better with my complexion in the dead of summer because I do get about a shade or two darker. I don't know, maybe two shades darker in the summertime. So I wanted this one to really look good on my complexion during the summertime. I hope you guys can see that, but that is Coco Naughty there in the middle. This is a matte formulation. This is probably my favorite matte bronzer because I really don't like matte bronzers. I typically go for more of a satin finish type of bronzer like the one that I'm about to talk to you guys next. Now, I want to preface this by saying I know they've done us wrong in the past. I tried it out and I loved it. It is what it is. I love this bronzer. I recommend this bronzer. This is the bronzer that I am wearing today, and I love it. I love it. I love it. This is the Physicians Formula Endless Summer Butter Bronzer, and it came out earlier in the year in 2019, and this is what it looks like. And unfortunately, these really don't swatch too well, but they look good. Okay. I don't know if you guys can see that, but it's this one over here. 
I think that it's absolutely beautiful. I do have it on today. It just adds the right amount of radiance to the skin. Not shimmery, nothing glittery, just radiance. Um, and of course, it, it warms up the skin tone, thus the purpose of a bronzer. But yeah, I absolutely love this bronzer. I will buy it again if something were to happen to it. I do highly recommend it. Um, they do have another one called the Sculpting Bronzer. Let me find it for y'all. This is the Sculpting Bronzer. And I do believe that you can get this on the Physician's Formula website. Um, I'm not quite sure where else you can get it because I haven't really checked it out. But this is the Sculpting Bronzer. It's darker than Endless Summer, you can see. I love them both. They are the bomb. But anyhow, the Physicians Formula bronzers are the bomb. I absolutely love them. I'm so glad that I tried them out in 2019. And I will forever have one in my collection. They are that good. Okay, I'd say we're about halfway through my top 19 products. So, so in 2019, you guys know that we all were hit with an avalanche of new releases for eyeshadow palettes. Um, you guys know that I love to stay more on the high-end luxury side of eyeshadows simply because I just have not uh, come across some that I really like. But trust, I'm going to get there because I do know that they are out there. But for today, we're going to talk about three eyeshadow palettes that totally did it for me in 2019 that I absolutely love. So we're basically going to swatch my favorite um shade out of each palette and I'm going to rank these from least to most favorite out of the three. So we're going to talk about first the Natasha Denona Sunrise palette. This came out I believe girl, I don't know July. I don't know but everyone knows what she looks like. I did a tutorial using this palette on my channel just in case you guys are interested. The packaging the packaging on this is beautiful. Um, I also seen online that they have a new mini eyeshadow palette just like this one coming out called Love Potion, Love Spell, something. But it's in, view, it's in pink packaging like this one and it's really cute. But um, yeah, the Sunrise palette was absolutely one of my favorite eyeshadow purchases of 2019. Um, the colors all spoke to me. They all looked well on my complexion. So let's see. My favorite shades out of this eyeshadow palette are Clove, which is over here, and then Awakening over here. Those are my two favorites. I'll swatch them for you. The mattes are just buttery. Buttery smooth. I absolutely love it. Okay. So that is Awakening and that is Clove. They are absolutely beautiful. I absolutely love this palette. I love the price point. We got You guys know that Natasha Denona eyeshadow palettes go up to the $200 price point. But these are a little bit more affordable if you want to experience the luxuriousness of Natasha Denona at $65. Um... So yeah, that is number three of my three eyeshadow palettes for this year. I absolutely love it. And y'all, <laughs> this was really hard. So in my number two spot is another Natasha Denona palette, okay? And let me clean my fingers off real quick. So this is another Natasha uh, Denona palette that came out most recently. Um, she's coming out with eyeshadow palettes so fast these days, I really can't keep up. This is the Metropolis palette. And yes, I really love this palette. This is basically a mini version of her 28 pan palette. I'm loving the mini versions of the palettes because I feel like you get more bang for your buck because no one's using those full big eyeshadow palettes, you know, if, unless you're an artist that does makeup regularly on other people. But yeah, this is the Natasha Denona Metropolis palette. She is beautiful. Oh my goodness. It's just so pretty. I absolutely love this palette and it's so hard to pick just two colors, but I'm going to. So the green mustardy green color is troop and 
Jubilee is the blue color. Man, that's pretty. Look at that. That's Jubilee, and then that's Troop. I absolutely love this palette. Blends like a dream. Neither of the two that I've talked about so far are on my eyes. My number one palette for 2019 is what I have on the eyes, and I'm going to walk you through the colors that I'm wearing right now. And in my number one spot is an Anastasia palette. And you guys can probably guess what palette I'm going to talk about. This is the Jackiana and ABH collaboration. Let's talk about the packaging first. The packaging is worth keeping the box because it's that pretty. And just everything about this palette, I feel this is basically the best palette that Anastasia has ever launched, in my opinion. So everybody named Mama knows what this palette looks like. And... These colors, they do kick up a little bit, just like all other Anastasia's eyeshadows, but I do feel like these blend just a little bit more effortlessly. Um, I'll walk you guys through what I have on my eye right now. So I have on Credit in the crease. I blended that out with a little bit of ginger. And then I went on top of the lid with Lituation. And then I put Soel in the tear duct area. Okay. So for eyeshadows to create today's look, um, this is a all season palette in my opinion. You can wear this regardless of what time of year it is. Um, the colors are pigmented. They are rich. They are perfect for deeper skin tones, which was the whole purpose of the palette. Um, the colors blend beautifully. That is why this is my number one palette for 2019. I absolutely love it. It's the bomb. So now that we have all of the other complexion products out of the way and eyeshadow palettes out of the, out of the way, we're going to talk about foundations and concealers. And we're going to start out with our concealers. I have two concealers that I want to share with you guys. These were my absolute favorite concealers all 2019 especially this first one okay so this concealer is hands down my favorite concealer of 2019 also released in 2019 and if you guys watch my channel you already know what i'm about to say this is the armani power fabric concealer um yes there is also a armani power fabric fabric foundation that i've never tried before but this armani power fabric concealer is life i do not have it on today unfortunately um this is the shade 8.75 i absolutely love this concealer this is the color that i use to highlight with on my face under my eyes it blends like a dream it wears like a dream it does not emph emphasize fine lines no texture and um, it doesn't separate it it's just beautiful it's a absolutely stunning concealer yes it is a little bit on the uh, pricier side but um, I can rationalize that because I didn't purchase a lot of concealers in 2019. But out of the ones that I did try, this reigns number one. Now, in my number two spot, I just fell in love with just a few months ago, I would say over the last three months. And that is the Urban Decay Stay Naked Concealer. Of course, there's an Urban Decay Stay Naked Foundation, which I'll talk to you guys about in a second. But this is the Stay Naked Concealer. I absolutely love this concealer. This is the concealer that I've been using as part of my everyday makeup routine, especially this correcting shade. This is a, a shade W, I'm sorry, ADWO. And I use this shade here under my eyes. This is 60 WR. So ADWO, I use it to correct dark spots on the face. I'll show you guys what the color looks like. I mean, it's perfect for women of color. It's not too orange. I just feel like it's perfect for correcting. If you are anything around NW45 to NC46, this is a perfect correcting color for you. Love it. This is the one that I've used under my eyes, and I absolutely love 
this concealer and that's what 60 wr looks like love 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 this concealer so much okay so foundations right i have three different foundations that i absolutely feel head over heels one of them you guys should be able to guess because i talk about it all the time especially in the earlier part of 2019 First things first, the drugstore option. Um, you guys know that I did try out more drugstore foundation on my channel, more drugstore products on my channel. Um, and this is one that I fell head over heels for. This is the L'Oreal Unstoppable 24 Hour Fresh Wear Foundation. Um, because they do not have my shade in this range, I had to purchase two different shades. I purchased 515 and 510. So I basically, depending on what time of year it is, like right now, I will do like two to three pumps of 510 and one pump of 515. Once we get a little bit closer to summertime where I darken up a bit, I'll do like 50-50 mix. So I will go ahead and show you guys what each of these shades look like, just so you know the difference between 515 and 510, just in case you're gonna go and buy them in store. So to me, 515 is more of a NC, a true NC50, if not even a little bit darker, honestly. And 510 is more or less your true NC45, if you will. I'm right dab in the middle of these two. So you see this 515, and then this is over here, this is 510. Both of them are absolutely beautiful. You blend them, to, you blend these two together, and you get my perfect shade. Basically, that's the two blended in. It basically looks like my perfect shade. Um, I personally did not mind because I love the formula very, very much. Um, this isn't something that I would wear dead in the middle of the summertime if I want longevity. Um, if I'm just going to an event where I'm going to be there for four hours, I'd wear it, but I would make sure I prime very good and powder very good um it has good lasting power but if you have really oily skin your oils are going to come through in the middle of summer in texas with that foundation um the next one we're, we're going to talk about is one that i've been loving since the tail end of december 2018 that i'm pretty sure you guys are tired of me talking about so we're going to talk about it one last time because you guys gotta know what works and what doesn't. And this works for me. That is none other than the Laura Mercier Flawless Lumiere Radiance Perfecting Foundation. Love these foundations. Um, I do have two different shades because depending on what time of year, you know, my uh, skin tone changes. And there's not one specific shade that matches me. So in wintertime, I would use 4C1 Praline with maybe one pump of, this is Hazelnut 5N2. But I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys what both look like. This foundation does oxidize a bit. So definitely take that in consideration when you try it. All right, so this one over here is 4C1, and this is 5N2. So you can definitely see this is more so on the NC40, uh, no, NC50 side. And this one is more or less like an NC44, if you ask me. So I take these two together and I, you know, get my perfect shade. But I love the formula so much that I'm willing to purchase two different shades. Um, I feel like it's, it is listed as Lumiere, which is a radiant, uh, a radiant foundation. But I don't really feel like it's too, too radiant. So yeah last but not least for the foundations is one that is very 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 good if you are oily if you want something that lasts this is it she's a little bit on the pricey side but trust this is a good one and not very many talk well not very many people talk about chanel uh foundations period but this is a good one this is the chanel ultra latent foundation um i do have mine in shade BD 101. It's a little bit too light. Just a little bit. So I can go down a shade and get the perfect shade. I just haven't done it yet. But I'll show you guys what this looks 
like. And um, pretty much all of these foundations you have to let dry down because they will dry down a little bit darker than what they appear when you apply them first on your hand or your face. So this is the Chanel Ultra Latent. This is a beautiful foundation with a very skin-like finish that it, it, it's a soft matte finish, I would say. It looks very, very beautiful on the skin. It is mattifying. It is long wearing and I love it. This is my favorite out of all favorite foundation of 2019. If you have not had a chance to try it, try it. Chanel reformulated, repackaged this foundation in December 2018. I purchased it around, um, I don't know, February, March 2019, and I have been using it mostly off camera ever since. I absolutely love it. It says that it's a all-day comfort, flawless finish foundation, and I definitely um, agree with that statement. All right, so those are my foundations of 2019 that I have absolutely been in love with. Okay, last but not least are lips. And I only have two products in this category that I want to mention to you guys. One being a lipstick. And you guys, if you watch my channel, you should know what lipstick I'm about to talk about. These are the Becca Lipstick Love Lipsticks. Yes, ma'am. I absolutely fell head over heels for this lipstick this year. I am currently wearing Tawny. What I loved about these is that they have undertones. They have neutral, cool, or warm. Um, and if you know your skin tone, you know what looks good on you that would help you further pick what shades look good on you. I can wear a neutral or cool. I'm sorry, I could wear a neutral or warm, not so much a cool. But uh, these two are truffle and tawny, and I am going to swatch them for you. Someone asked, do I like these better than my Pat McGrath? And... Um, I'm not going to necessarily say yes or no, but these are my favorite lipsticks of the moment of 2019, hands down for sure. So this is, this is Tawny. This is what I have on today. This is a neutral and you'll see that in the swatches. So this pinky looking color, this is truffle and then this nudie brown looking color is um, Tawny, which is what I have on, on my lips today. So my hands down favorite neutral nude lip that I've been rocking this year has been with my last, the, the very last product that I'm going to mention to you guys for my favorites. And that is the Charlotte Tilbury Lip Cheat Lip Pencil. This is the shade Foxy Brown. So this is comparable to the MAC Court Lip Liner. You see the lip liner here? But what I like about this one is it's not warm. Sometimes I don't want warm a warm undertone on my lips. So I found the perfect new combination for me this year, which is this Tawny Neutral Lipstick, this lip pencil, and the Pat McGrath Lip Gloss Faux Real which I don't have here in front of me. This one is Flesh Fantasy. You can use this one too, uh, but it does have a little bit of a pinky undertone. I prefer using this lip gloss with the truffle lipstick. But Flesh Fantasy, Tawny lipstick with this lip pencil, Foxy Brown. That is the perfect neutral nude lip for me at my skin tone. Absolutely love it. Just in case you guys missed it, this is the uh, truffle. This is Tawny, and this is Foxy Brown Lip Liner. Absolutely love it. So yeah, fam, that is going to wrap up my top 19 of 2019. These are the best of the best products that I've tried out throughout the whole year. And I wanted to come, even though it's kind of like a month late, and share them with you guys. I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. Comment down below and let me know what videos you would like to see me do next. Um, just a quick heads up, I think I am going to do like a winter... Uh, essentials video or something like that kind of how, how I did kind of how I did for fall season I'm going to do something like that coming up in the next couple of weeks and until the next time I'm going to see you later